You are listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast, a podcast where a couple friends sit and talk around the fire after everyone else has gone to bed. Grab a drink and join us as we discuss everything from famous explorers, artificial intelligence, and what is the meaning of life. What do you call a little person who deals in prosthetics? I don't know, Nick. What do you call them? A small arms dealer. da da We're going to talk about prosthetics, cyborgs, past, present, future. But before we get into that, Mike, how you doing? What are you drinking? Well, I am surviving, my friend, but I have some vodka and cranberry juice to keep me company. How about you? What are you drinking and how are you doing? Doing great. I got some... The, of the Bush Light hunting beer can, so it's going to be one of those nights. <laughs> one, of the, one of those deals. So this is, I guess, and this kind of depends on what you count as a prosthetic, but we have splints, you know, like splints that people walk on from that were dated between the years 2750 to 2625 B.C., so... Over 4,000 years ago was the first splint. Predating Roman history, and I would say probably predating Greek history. My dates are a little bit off. Yes, wait, wait what am I talking about? Wait, predate. That's more towards the Mesopotamian area. Holy crap, Nick, that far away? Yep. It's uh, in Egypt and they were found. And uh, the first, the earliest known written reference to limbs was around 500 years before Christ. But the first true prosthetic was between the years 950 to 710 BC and that we know of. It could There could be earlier ones or later ones. Well, we know there's later ones, but this is the first true prosthetic, not really a splint, something that is worn all the time. And Mike, what, do you, what body part do you think the first prosthetic is? Oh boy, in my head, for some reason, George Washington's wooden teeth comes up. My dirty mind somehow thinks wooden cock. But I also think part wooden peg leg. We go with peg leg, Nick. I mean, you're pretty close. It's actually a toe. Oh, is it really a toe? Out of all things. A prosthetic big toe, which belonged to someone of higher class, was found in Egypt. And we all know that toes are, I don't know, I hope this is true. I just It's one of those things that might have just been accepted by everybody, that you can't balance without your big toes. And as a set of toes for one side your right side toes um but it says that the egyptians had sandals that were very important like you had to wear these sandals and so that by creating this toe the wearer was then able to wear these sandals like everybody else and so it almost was as if this isn't a function even though i'm surely provided some balance I'm, i'm assuming not an expert in ancient egyptian toe prosthetics but it's more about allowing the wearer to kind of be a part of society you know of of being human be experiencing the things everyone else can experience more cosmetic and traditional i guess yeah so that was the earliest known prosthetic and obviously as prosthetics came and went they you know people improved upon the design here's a story mike i don't know if you ran across the story uh Ran across the story of Marcus Sergius. Hope I'm saying that right. No, but he sounds like the patron saint of surgeons with that last name. <laughs> he lived from 218 to 201 BC, and he was a Roman, and he g- lost his right hand in battle. So he created an iron, or created an iron... Um, fist? Shield, fist and shield, so he could continue to fight. Wow, that is dedication. I mean, hopefully he had some ambidextry, but to love battle that much where you quite literally lose a limb and you just create a new one and keep on going, that's dedication there. Yeah, he lost his right hand. He's like, well, what do I need this for anyway? Holding a shield? I can do that on my by myself. So he made a shield and continued to fight. And the crazy thing is he lost his, his arm in a young age and continued to have a long military career. Apparently, he was captured by Hannibal twice and escaped twice. Jesus. Well, that eh, well, doesn't surprise me, Hannibal being a ragtag group of 
soldiers that they he found on the way crossing to Rome. But uh, talk about not giving up, climbing that mountain of, uh, oh, not having a limb? Eh, no big deal. I'm going to go to war against perhaps one of the best generals of all time. Yeah, so a, a description was written in a book that was published in 77 years after uh, Jesus died, 77 A.D., he said that in two campaigns, he was wounded 23 times, resulting with the result that he had no use in either hand or either foot, only his spirit remained intact. Although disabled, he served in many subsequent campaigns, um, twice captured by Hannibal, no ordinary foe, from whom twice he escaped, although kept in chains and shackles every day for 20 months. He fought four times with only his left hand, while two horses he was riding were stabbed beneath him. He had a right hand made of iron for him, going into battle with this bound to his arm, raised the siege of Cremona, saved, I don't know, Piacenza, and captured 12 enemy camps in Gaul, all of which exploits were confirmed by the speech he made as Praetor when his colleagues tried to debar him as infirm from the sacrifices. What pile of wreaths he would have amassed in the face of a different enemy. One, they really don't make them like they used to anymore. Two... How is this not a movie yet? I think this is a movie. You remember on Monty Python? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> How about the... Uh, I don't know. For some reason in my mind, I kept adding correlation to Dromino for here in the United States on losing limbs and still not giving up on a fight. I mean, Jesus. That is just one hell of a spirit there. God, I'm a little jealous of his willpower. Yep. But... There's a common theme with the history of prosthetics and warfare is, is that theme. There seems to be an increase in innovation during and after a war in prosthetics, and there's kind of a lull. Uh, in the early 16th century... Wait, Nick, you're telling me limbs aren't just popping off left and right? <laughs> you'd think there'd be a little improvements, but it really seems sp sporadic. Um, but the Dr. Am... Oh, jeez. Ambrosi Pere, I have no idea, but he was the first person to create hinged prosthetics and uh, with locking joints, which are still, in his technique, is still kind of common. Um, and then there really wasn't anything until the Civil War. So this is a crazy story, but the, f the first amputee of the Civil War on June 1st, 1861, an engineering student, James Edward Hanger, um, left to go to war. And then on June 3rd, so pretty soon after, he, a cannonball took off his leg in the Battle of Philippi. Philippi? I don't know. This doesn't sound American, but P-H-I-L-I-P-P-I. -P -P -I. Should have looked that up, too. I'm, I'm just doing... You're, you're, you're gonna, pulling a you're mic. make fun of me. On all my pronunciations. Whoever talks first can't pronounce, I guess. <laughs> but uh, so he lost his leg. And this is crazy. It's like he was the first amputee of the Civil War. Like, that's such a terrible brag. Like, <laughs> what did your grandpa do during the Civil War? Well, he was the first one to lose a leg. But every, everywhere I read about this guy, everyone mentions that he was the first amputee of the Civil War. Yeah. So he, he survived, obviously. And obviously is... Medicine wasn't so good, so we just cut that leg off. And uh, so he went home in August of 1861, and he just went up to his bedroom. And everyone assumed, like, oh, this guy's fucking done. He's he's just sad. He's moping around. And uh, I don't understand how the rest of the story happened, but um, at, he stayed in there from August to November, and apparently no one, like, went to go check on him and see how he was doing. And he created a limb like a, a prosthetic limb for himself and he came out in november and he walked downstairs which has got to be crazy if you're the family and your you know your hard flex sibling is upstairs with one leg and you just hear someone walking down the stairs like what the fuck <laughs> hard flex <laughs> you think i was done nope i'm back so yeah, he whittled this. He whittled his limb, and uh, it had an articulating knee joint, and so it was kind of one of those advancements. And so he created a company to help 
other uh, wounded veterans of the Civil War. But there was a lot the, there. <laughs> yeah, business was booming, uh, and because he wanted to help people and figured out a pretty good way to do it, and not not just get them the limbs, but teach them how to use them, because it's obviously a not you can't just pick this up. And uh, so he did, and that company is still making prosthetics today, which I thought was kind of crazy. Dang, a hundred some what hundred twenty thirty year old company that is ridiculous. Yep. And so he retired. I don't know what year he retired, but then in 1915, he went to Europe to help people in World War I with their prosthetics. Wow. Um, yeah. He, he's he got a heart of gold. I mean, no one knows your troubles as much as a person who's in the same boat as you, but still, to not only after help veterans after one war, well, you probably have the Spanish-American War too, but also to go over to Europe during World War One, where... It was just as many, if not more, people getting amputated and needing new limbs. That's that is a heart of gold right there. Yep. And then uh, moving a little closer to our time in 1975, uh, Ysidro Martinez created a below the knee prosthetic that, instead of trying to just recreate how our limb works, um, he designed a different style of uh, prosthetic. I don't really know how to describe it over a podcast. But... I actually saw it came across as I think the best way to describe it is it was more focusing on mechanical rather than mimicking. So rather than mimic how our legs naturally work, you break down the principles of, hey, leverage, bending, and you don't have to match the exact shape. You just need to match the function. Right, that's exactly what he did, is he's like, how, do, how does this leg work, and I'm going to make that, not how do I make this look like a leg and work. He was like, well, let's just make it work. I was trying to describe the shape, which, but the important part is, it's uh, he's the one kind of credited with going away from, how do we just make this you know leg look like a leg, instead of how do we make this leg work for the person using it. Functionality over cosmetics, always my favorite, hence why I became an engineer. But to back travel a couple decades to the 1960s, a Manfield Kleins, he would be the first one, along with his partner, to come up with the word cyborg. And that same year in 1960, the word was featured in the Journal of Astronauts in September of 1960. Coming up with the word and having it solidified in history, that is quite impressive. That's where cyborgs come from. I mean, we've always had automaton and uh, atomics from, I mean, going back to Jules Verne and atomic birds of back into the Renaissance where they were, I don't know, making robotics. But cyborg itself is a 20th century word. And with that has been a whole slew and has been a whole boom of growths. Now, with more population means, unfortunately, sometimes more birth defects. Also, more people might lead to more accidents, car accidents, plane accidents, et cetera, et cetera, which means more people need prosthetics. And Nick, if you like, if it's okay with you, I'd like to jump into the modern prosthetics or the cutting edge prosthetics. Yeah, I'm all uh, caught up. There's a lot more to it, but we're not. We just want to give a brief overview. But now let's talk about what's going on in our world. Well, the 21st century has been a very interesting word for world for prosthetics. Many countries, many universities, many companies are tackling this problem, and in more ways than one. Sticking with prosthetic limbs, well, at MIT, an Ad a Edward Lawson had an amputated leg, but now with surgery, you're able to dictate it more rather than just get it cut off. So, unlike the Civil Wars, he decided he wants to keep as much nerves, muscles, and tendons as possible, and with MIT's help and his own garage, began making prosthetics. One foot that was able to feel, which is strange to sound, but having buttons and sensors at the bottom of his robotic leg to feel through. And to give an idea, because robotics is a very common situation in cyborgs, how a quick overlaps on how our brain and nervous system works is electrical signals. You send electrical signals or electrical volts and our brain registers them it's um 
It's our positive negative. It's telling it yes, no, telling it to sense. It's our body is electric. And with his nerves, his tendons and muscles still somewhat there, at least a good percentage of it after the amputation, he's able to connect to those. So when you push a button or a sensor hits, it sends a small electrical volt to the nerves that would normally be in his foot so he can feel. And that's not the only person who is doing this. I mean, there are multiple types of robotic limbs using electrical sensors to feel. I know for hands, simply tensing your muscles, that tension creates electrical impulse, which helps people close their prosthetic hands, which are now, because of 3D printers, becoming cheaper and easier to print for people, especially war victims in third world countries or people without proper medical world uh, medical process in third world countries. And as we progress, I mean, in a simplified way, cochlear implants and retinal implants are just electrical implants. So, um, Nick, are you familiar with the uh, cochlear implants? Is that... Is that the inner ear one, or is that something else? Is that the one that helps you balance? Uh, no. So uh, cochlear ear implants are pretty much a electrical magnetic sensor that's surgically implanted into your brain so you're able to hear. So for those who don't know, a speaker or microphone is pretty much just a magnet and coil of wires. Well, our brains operating in electrical pulses, like I just said, well, if you send a magnet through a coil of wires, like a microphone, it creates electrical impulse. And we can bypass that and use that to implement into our brain so we can have deaf people hear. And, Nick, you probably don't know this, but this is prosthetics is a very uh, close-to-home subject for me. My dad had a prosthetic leg, and my mom has a cochlear implant. So prosthetics have been in our family since I've been born. Uh, and then you have retinal implants, which is a new kind of technology. So our brain and our body, what it can do is so impressive. We're able to adapt to whatever happens. I mean, we use a limb. We, we spend six months up in an attic carving away at one leg and then walk down the stairs to, to scare the hell out of our family. With a new robotic eyes which is the same kind of thing electrodes going to the brain our brain goes okay this is what we have this is what is new now we're going to deal with it we're actually making prosthetic eyes and some of that technology comes from a uh, a jen newman who lost his vision due to an accident and from lisbon based in uh dolby institute attached quite literally a camera into his brain to able to see a process that was unheard of science fiction became testing and kind of uh prototypey which is now a medical process which you can do if you really want to being deaf and blind anymore is a choice now don't get me wrong there's of course exceptions but people now have the ability to choose based on whatever happened or disease depending on you know variables but to not be blind or deaf anymore. The prosthetic limbs just went from not just limbs anymore, but vital sensory organs. That's pretty crazy. And that's I always thought that that was something like, yeah, I don't know, we just we just can't fix that. No, no, no. No, 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 no. When there's a will, there's a way. Uh it's quite interesting. Um modern car, well, most prosthetics nowadays can bend. So, it's either at the knee, it can uh Below the knee, it can bend, or above the knee, it can bend in some way. It's not usually just a straight leg prosthetic, which is a huge difference. Um, for those who don't know, the, the hinge method that Nick was talking about really revolutionized. I mean, up until, I think, 2010, it still wasn't standardized. Um, my, my dad, in fact, uh, had to convert his, uh, his old Camaro because his prosthetic leg was a straight prosthetic leg. So he could lean back and fit his prosthetic leg into the car. So we've gone from crappy prosthetic legs to at large mass production, able to print legs that are just for you and it's everyday function. And with that comes a slew of different things. Because with prosthetics, Nick, prosthetic limbs, I should say, we don't have to have the same abilities as we did with our old limbs. 
So if we lose a leg, like uh, a certain Olympian, we could add a prosthetic leg in there that technically, through engineering, could run faster than the human could. Or more likely, which is common, kind of coming, is we can mimic other animals in nature. I don't know if you came across this, Nick. Um, I did not come across this. The closest thing I think I have to this is uh, DARPA trying to make cyborg insects. Oh, one, I love DARPA. DARPA DARPA is the only company I've ever come across that actually put burning lasers on dolphins. Straight out of Dr. Evil. But humans are now thinking, hey, we lost a limb. Why do we have to have the same thing as we used to have? So we're starting to mimic animals and their different organary senses. So instead of having eyes of a human, eyes of a hawk. You can see as well as a hawk can. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a whole new eye. It could be contact lenses, which are on the developing market right now. You can have different types of tongues where you can sense like a snake in heat. You could have a uh, magnetite inside you so you could always point like a compass, like a bird. The prosthetics, the synthetic organs, the cyborgs are becoming more choice necessarily than necessity. There are more growing sensories than there are sensories that we were born with. For example, Neil Herbison was born not able to see color. In case uh, some of you don't know, synthesology, uh, some people can hear in color. Uh, some people can taste words. There's a whole slew of synthesology. I think there's like 22 or 26. Um, but Neil Harrison, born not be able to see color, made and had an antenna attached to his brain that turns the frequency which was produced by light into vibrations which is red which his brain picked up on red and converted to color so he was quite literally hearing sound through an antenna um i understood all the words that you were saying i'm just gonna have it. so he was he seeing wait seeing color through an antenna hearing color hearing color so and and he was able to hear and then like his brain was able to put together what color things were yep okay you say it like this is so like like i'm the idiot for not understanding this <laughs> sorry so uh that type of world of sociology of people be able to dual learn has always been fascination with me and the ability to taste by feel to uh to see by smell like all these different senses that are able to combine together. Our, our brain is one of the most fascinating, complex things in the entire universe. And the idea of using vibrations through an antenna attached to his, into his brain to hear sound and convert it into seeing color is, is utterly fascinating. I mean, m we as a human spectrum, uh, sorry, we as a human species can only see a very small percentage of the light spectrum. I mean, chameleons can see in ultraviolet. Uh, many animals can see in thermal. We see in such a small, minute color spectrum. And there are colors we can't even imagine because we have never seen or can't understand. Yet, with technology and cyborg technology, we might be able to see beyond what this world is. We might be able to see crazy things i mean imagine all right this is kind of a little off topic but imagine you're hearing color and you take drugs like say acid like a hallucinogen i wonder how that would affect your brain i imagine that'd be quite interesting well so one i'm just amazed like okay so i type a word into my like google translate from spanish to english and if i don't type it perfectly it doesn't i like i don't get the English word, but your brain can receive auditory information and churns out visual information. From the best of my ability, yes. <laughs> no, it's just crazy. But I was, what I was saying is, I'm sure, I feel like the, I don't know if you can turn it off or on, but how much uh, money fire departments around the country are spending on thermal cameras right now where you just outfit each firefighter with thermal eyes. Oh, that's a scary thought of just be able to see 
he, that'd be like the predator. Maybe imagine your eyes like the the movie Predator, able to see all these different uh, wavelengths and heats and uh, night vision, pretty much. But you're using it for good instead of killing Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yes, the it, one. Yes, we don't want to kill Arnold. Uh, two, the brain is so powerful. I there's so many neurons in there. It's so powerful, and it's just all electrical signals. And sticking with limbs and electrical signals in the brain, I assume, Nick, you saw the limbs being controlled by thought? Yes, I did see that, which is, it's, uh, to me, so from what I read is, it seems like we can do it, but the prosthetics, the people who make one, would rather have your control hooked up to, like, some area, I might be going way off topic here, but one of the things that I saw is that it's easier to take some of those nerves that were going down into that limb and put them somewhere else. So when you move them, it moves some of your muscles in another muscle group. And that's where your control panel is because it's easier to pick up muscles moving compared to like what your brain's saying. Cause it's the size is so much larger over a muscle group than your brain. It's a much smaller, it has to be much more precise kind of control. But yes, I have seen where they can control it with thought. Perhaps with fingers, they have to do the more precise control with the muscle groups. But the control with thought has made leaps and bounds over the past decade. I mean, lots of robotic arms, robotic legs, are being simply controlled by the mind. Now, for those listening, you might be wondering, what on earth are you talking about? Are we are we Professor X in a wheelchair? No, 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 no. no. Though, uh, though Professor X could probably deal with some new legs, which prosthetics would be able to help him out with. The brain produces waves alpha waves gamma waves can't remember what else but anyhow these waves produced by the brain they're signals they are firing signals and we've built devices both internal and external so internal being surgery that is open brain surgery where it's implanted in the brain and external where it's pads attached to the head and quite literally in some cases a helmet there are kid toys you can buy that you can control a crappy remote control radio uh remote control helicopter with your brain these devices are now being used to implement so you just naturally think hey lift my arm grab and go grab something of course i don't know about the control the control like how good a control is but it's going from everywhere from hands legs to walking so if you are paralyzed from the waist down, you might get an exoskeleton and you might just, you know, go, oh, walk. Either subconsciously or consciously, the machine picks it up and your brain is able to move it. The scary part is it doesn't have to be your body you control. It doesn't have to be the machine you control. Technically, you can control other people this way. So in 2013, a team of scientists from Harvard Medical School, Boston University, and Korea University made a brain-to-brain -brain interference, a BPI, which I was talking about with the controlling things with your mind, simply thinking and things get moved. These collection of schools came up with a device that allowed humans to control rat tails simply by thinking. So able to control a synthetic, not sorry, able to control a bionic limb that is not even your own. And with medical procedures, being more and more advanced, and we're able to do entire arm transplants. If it might be an older arm, you're not be able to reattach the nerves together or the nerves might not work. You might be able to overcome that with robotics or the, with a baby eye and simply control a different person's limb that was attached to you for a prosthetic, which is straight out of science fiction. And boy, that's a whole slew of questions. All I can think about is uh, what's... Um... Neil Patrick Harris's character in uh, uh, was it Starship Troopers, where he's talking to the talking to the ferrets, Doctor Carl Jenkins, is using his head to control the ferrets. We're this close to Starship Troopers being a reality. As long as it's not ants, I'm on board. But yeah, that's crazy. But this BBI in. But what's the what's? I don't know. I feel like at that point, we're just going to be like little floating blobs and we're just going to have a machine that goes and does all of our stuff for us so that we can lift whatever and, and not floating blobs, but just be sitting in like a back to tank all day and hooked up to a thing in our little 
robot goes and does all our tasks. So the Matrix. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Well, I both agree and disagree at the same time with that statement. But before we get into that, Nick, I want to keep continuing about BBIs because I think, one, they're quite cool. I mean, imagine being able to put on a helmet or probably maybe even within 20 years, a baseball cap and able to control a prosthetic limb. Be able to walk again if you weren't not be or if you weren't able to. Or now kids who were born with a you know, a, a birth defect or something along those lines, it's no longer a necessity. Like the robotics can overcome that. I mean, you might be thinking, well, I'll never have a BBI. I'll never have my brain something that can control stuff with my brain. Well, we have companies like Neuralink being invented and we already have prosthetics like a metal hip inside of us, cochlear implants able to, for deaf people to hear, uh, eye trend, uh, robotic eyes for people to see. I can imagine that having brain-controlled limbs might be beneficial. Like, for example, if you are in an emergency situation and you, I don't know, are on a submarine and you're supposed to hit this button and you somehow get hit with shrapnel because a torpedo hit you, a device might be able to, imp that's implanted in you, be able to take control and just hit that button even though you're not thinking about it. Scary thought, but very interesting. And sticking with Harvard, because Harvard was one of the first ones I saw doing this brain-to-brain -brain for humans controlling another living thing. Also at Harvard, they grew cyborgs. So at a lab, they took a sample of human stem cells and some flexible mesh electronics, and they grew a cyborg organ uh, the best way. I think their main purpose was to grow a heart with a pacemaker already implanted. So if you get a heart transplant, you wouldn't have to get an external pacemaker. You could get an internal pacemaker that's already attached to the heart rather than attached by wires to the heart, which is scary to think about, but, I mean... We already have pacemakers. Again, we already have prosthetic limbs. We already have cochlear implants. Why is it any more weird to grow cyborg organs? Well, I get. I mean, I kind of looked into that about just growing a new organic one, but I feel like that's not the like that's a totally different thing. Oh, I think it should be important to know. In this episode, we're not mainly talking about biotech. We're talking about simply robotics into humans for cyborgs. But that would be because you could grow it with like, so one of the big problems with like, uh, say like a hand, like a, any kind of transplant is you have to take immunosuppressants because your body wants to reject it. But you could, you know, make it so that some tie it in with their genetic code so that their body would accept it. And it'd be even more of a fit because even with some of these prosthetics, especially anything that like comes out of the skin or comes, you know, from inside the body to out, there's the high risk of infection. And just oh, even with like the suction prosthetics, you have problems with it not fitting correctly and, and rubbing and, and it's in a damp area. So you have, you know, another risk of infection. Um, so I feel like this provides less risk of infection than these other techniques. Oh, uh, Nick, I think you dream too little. What I heard for a cyborg heart is one that's organic we grown by stem cells but still has robotic mesh in it is now someone can control you can control your own heart you can control your own heart rate if you want to speed it up because you need to run faster you're able to if your heart's starting to slow down because you've been that, shot that seems like a lot of work though like i want my heart to slow up and speed up according to my activity level like i don't, I don't want to have to go into the settings no, but imagine if it's a smart heart and you've been shot and your heart's starting to slow down, but your blood loss is going down from, I don't know, a different sensor or a uh, ro robotic sensor. So it goes, okay, we need to keep pumping blood or we need to, or hey, we're bleeding out really fast. Let's slow the heart rate to keep all the blood inside of us, but still fast enough to keep us going a lot to keep us alive. Or maybe, I don't know. That, that yeah that would be pretty sweet especially like for injuries like you're saying like blood loss or like uh snake bites where the less blood you circle circulate the better you just be like 
got bit by a snake, shut her down. But also imagine imagine you get like an apple heart, okay? And and then apple heart 2 comes out and suddenly your heart rate goes down to 73% of what it's <laughs> supposed to be. Yeah, that's a that's a whole slew of uh problems. But also imagine robotic lungs. Now if a person has asthma and they have cyborg lungs, then they'll have another asthma attack in their life. Or if they are a swimmer, they're able to have the cyborg cybotic lungs having the best ability to fuel to release carbon dioxide breath ratio possible. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I so what about uh like um a, a stomach where and that'd be wouldn't be a good one. Well, like, what um, about a heart that can process poisons? Your blood, yeah, or your bloodstream, like something that tells your body like what vitamins and minerals you're low on, and then you just, and then it's connected to your eye, kind of like the story about like those sailors stranded at sea who suddenly develop a craving for fish eyes because it has vital nutrients. Like instead of it, you know, kicking in in emergency situations, that this is what my body needs is is always on well that's actually closer than you think to what's happening nick i don't know if you came across smart tattoos uh i think we we did touch on those i think in another episode well we probably touched on them on uh, modern medical which you check out at backyard philosophy anywhere you listen to podcasts or on youtube but smart tattoos which are pre- i'll cover it kind of quickly but are tattoos that are ingrained with your body more cyborg uh, more cyborg technology which can tell you if you are missing your nutrients if you are having a certain disease if monitoring your heart rate your oxygen level etc cetera, etc cetera. it's able to have a diagnosis system that you can plug into on your body it's like an ob ob2 sensor right yes exactly it's pretty close to what it is imagine everyone walking around with a qr code on their skin and then you can scan it and figure out what their diet is number of sexual partners who they voted for heart rate i don't know (laughs) i don't know what else to put on there (laughs) but sticking with heart lungs eyesight all these cyborg technologies all these futuristic things creates almost a super soldier and straight out of comic books comes real cyborgs. I mean, from the U.S. Army Scientific Research Division to DARPA to, God, I imagine dozens of U.S. companies working on it, not, not counting how many world countries are working on it, are working on super soldiers, are working on making cyborgs with faster limbs, faster heart rate, better eyes, better hearing. You don't... What you have doesn't have to be taken away for it to get improved. So, example, you might be a healthy-born person. Be 18 years old, you join the military. Well, you want to join a special C division. Well, they you can sign a waiver and switch out your lungs to be able to breathe underwater better. Or if you're, I don't know, a snipe, you want to join a sniper division, you can get better eyes to, you know, shoot better or better hearing to hear things. You can be synthetically enhanced through robotics. And both the U.S. and pretty much every country in the world is in some form or matter working on this. From the articles I can see is they're trying to implement the first cyborg human into combat by 2050 for the United States. Now, that was kind of vague because they might mean exoskeleton. They might mean synthetic limbs. I mean, we've already, in the United States, sent soldiers who have prosthetic limbs into combat because, well, they're highly trained. Now their leg is bulletproof. They're uh, they're still a deadly force. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is a correction and more a, more a question. When you said we can enable soldiers to breathe underwater better, I was curious of who's breathing underwater besides uh is it uh ewan mcgregor and liam neeson in the first uh in the phantom menace the first new star wars oh shit the i announced myself as a lantian <laughs> yeah do you guys not have gills yourself it's just you and elon musk i guess <laughs> hey 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 elon musk is from mars i'm from the bottom of the ocean let's get this right but yeah so i mean i think that's 
like we like we talked about um the military is funding a lot of the prosthetics and this kind of stuff because it's got a pretty obvious military application and i mean i think everyone i'm sure china's got some crazy shit that they're working on that we're never going to find out about until it's too late but yeah i mean i think that this is you know the next step in in warfare is going to be not only more drones not just air drones but but ground drones and stuff like that but also specifically engineered humans you know to like you're saying improved senses and whatever to fit whatever they need to do but I think it'd be crazy to think that they're not working on stuff like that, that it's more ahead than we think. Oh, yes. Imagine a soldier whose cartilage never wears down, how long they could stay in the fight. Or a, uh, or a soldier whose adrenaline never spikes, so they're able to stay calm, cool, and they don't have to do box breathing and consistently be calm underneath pressure. That is a small taste of what is possible. I mean, we already mentioned you could add on to what you already have. So a soldier could willingly change out their ears for robotic ears to hear better. Well, what's stopping them from doing that from robotic hands, having robotic strength, or robotic legs to run faster and never get tired? We've seen it in movies. Um, Nick, are you familiar with the movie Logan, the Wolverine movie? I have not seen it. You know, you really are busting my balls here, but uh, I have seen Captain America or the sh- Captain America movie. Shut up! It's uh, probably pretty much the same thing, <laughs> no. right? Um, there's a group of missionaries in this group that has synthetic slash robotic limbs, which were done by choice. So they have robotic hands that can bend both ways, so they can grab either way or heightened reflexes because the robotic has different sensors on it. Um, There's all these different methods. So imagine instead of having Luke lose his hand, he deliberately cuts it off to have a robotic hand. That is a real possibility that is coming. And I'm not even joking. There are artists nowadays. um, Well, I should point this out. Some body hackers who are doing these modifications to their bodies robotically call themselves transhumanists. Just want to point that out there. It's kind of a terrible name. It's, it's I don't know, I feel like you come up with a better name than that. Uh, but artists are now entering the cyborg world. So people might be doing it cosmetically. So, like uh, for an example, the artist uh, Stelio Arcadius, he is a Australian who implanted an ear into his forearm. Or, I think she was French, the uh, Ribis, she implanted a device that senses every earthquake on the planet. So people could quite literally just cut off their limbs or remove perfectly good limbs simply so they could have heightened abilities. To have, I don't know, a third eye, a uh, new leg... That's a robotic, two robotic legs are faster, even though they have two perfectly good working legs. The ability to make yourself into a cyborg is becoming more and more possible. Yeah, I did see, um, I don't know if you ran across this, but uh, there's a, I'm trying to find it. There's a group of people who have a condition where they cut off, they, they go to like a doctor and do it the right way and cut off parts of their body like a leg or an arm or something i did not come across this uh please explain a little bit more okay um so it's called body integrity identity disorder and these people have they they want to get a part of their body amputated that they feel like is not supposed to be there and it's usually like an arm or a leg or a foot or something and there's this like swedish doctor I want to say it's Swedish, Um, but he um, cuts, he's cut two of these people, like, I think like a leg and a foot or something off of these people. And he says, it's like two of the most fulfilling surgeries he's ever done because they, they like changed their life. They didn't want these, I mean, obviously, (laughs) but uh, they didn't want these body parts and now they're much happier. I, I, 
Isn't yeah. eugenics still legal in Sweden? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, let's uh, um, Sweden and surgery, I don't think, have the best reputation. But I've never heard of people who, so they, uh, some people, not the whole group, they call themselves transable, and they believe that they were born in the wrong bodies or with the wrong body part. I am a bit dumbfounded, and I am trying to buy myself time to how to reply to that. But having one, how is a doctor legally able to do that? Two, I feel like it's a very dangerous surgery to have an entire limb cut off. Uh, well, so one, so I guess um, in this article, it was one Scottish surgeon, and then another one was in Mexico. The Mexican one doesn't surprise me. The Scottish one lost his license, and the Mexican was jailed. All right, Mexico did a better job of handling it than, than the other. Uh, yeah, that's um, that's heavy body dysmorphia. But the way cyborg technology is happening, that might become more common. You don't like your vertical? Well, it has springs to your legs. You don't like your, um, your jaw? Well, it had a metal jaw. You don't like that you can't, uh, you can't smell whatever is 100 feet away? Add new nose sensors. Add a different type of nose. That's all within grasp. Actually, I would argue that's all possible today. It's just not common. Well, it's it's crazy. Like it seems so weird of someone getting something done like that, but people get their noses worked on all the time, and they don't get any better senses at all. You know, you might as well get a package deal. Yeah, be able to. Well. I don't honestly don't know if I want to be able to smell better. Eyesight, sure. Hearing, sure. Taste, maybe. Maybe a different sense sense I don't have, sure. But smell, I don't know. I don't want to be in a car trapped with you, Nick, and you rip one, and I have to smell it a hundred times worse than it actually is. I think that might be a trend that's more common in more rural communities than more urban communities. If I had to guess. <laughs> Yeah, you could you could track down your prey if you're hunting quite literally like an animal. Smell, uh, scent, pretty much sense the animal. Um, but since you brought up the hospitals and doctors, I want to kind of jump onto that. Um, these doctor, well, doctors, I say, is a loose word. These doctors performing these surgeries for people who have body dysmorphia and want to get organs removed, I would say are far different than the ones trying to add robotics like cochlear implants to people who actually need cyborg technology. Um, I see a trend very soon of illegal body modifications and a whole new splew of illegal hospitals. I was wondering what your opinion on that was, Nick. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's definitely a thing. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this story, but uh, because of the what you call them, all the COVID checks from the government, a lot of people went down to Mexico and got, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the PC term, but ass implants, um, where they put a bunch of stuff in your butt to make it look bigger. And that's what a lot of... Uh, we call it a Kardashian here in the North. Well, yeah, so, Not a, so laugh a lot of people... Of a lot of, well, because I'm getting to the funny part of the story. Oh, God. So... So a lot of people went down to Mexico to get with their, you know, stimulus check, went down to Mexico to get their, their new ass implants, but, the, you know, they are going to fly back the next day. So you'd have all these people flying out of Mexico sitting on, like, these weird-ass things in the plane being in constant pain because they decided to get an ass implant and then fly out the next day. So if you see someone flying out of Mexico holding some sort of weird... It's donut. weird pillow looking donut thing. That's what happened. Ass implants. Because it's not something that they do in the United States very often, it seems like. Or if they do, it's very expensive and it's very cheap in Mexico. And when in putting something into your body, it's best to go cheap. Yep, that good old silica. Gotta love it. There's one story of they injected a woman with just concrete. So she's got a heavy ass. Yeah, it, there's there's complications from that one, believe it or not. Well, going away from 
that and going kind of back to cyborgs i uh i see it happening i can see it i can see it happening a black market of hey did these new uh this the military came out with this new type of um robotic arms and we stole some you you want to get them attached to you oh yeah sure and have robotic arms that could punch through walls and stuff like that oh my gosh now my my literal arms are gonna have to be registered with the atf are you fucking kidding me (laughs) well i also see other surgeries of of i i see unfortunately a lot of um malpractice or simply doctors who got their license revoked do these surgeries on like the black market imagine i mean who doesn't want to have superhero powers and robotics is a kind of a cheap way to get it but a couple things come to my mind when thinking about this is what happens like you said nick if things go out of date i mean external like a prosthetic leg or i don't know um yeah i I honestly just prosthetic lens is all i can think about that are more external they run out of date you can replace those or or if they but if they it's an internal one they break you have to do surgery to fix that that's uh and hell some of them might not be reversible and i feel like there might be need to be laws on whatever cyborg technology is implemented in your body it has to be reversible like it has to be able to be able to be taken out but i mean there's stuff like a like say for example electronic heart i mean i don't know you can't just even if there's a law like you're not you're not going to get an electronic heart then if you can just pull it out i feel like cuz that's not something you just swap out it's not an oil filter yeah but imagine if the company that was doing it made a defected heart and there's a warranty on it and you can get a new heart a better one the 2.0 yeah okay I, so not so you can i guess once you're i guess you're getting rid of your original body part but you have to have some sort of replacement for your heart for yeah for me for your wood for your organism for your organ i also think it's important to know for me for um cyborgs it is a electrical device in my mind it's not the exact definition but electrical device that is enhancing or replacing a human function that's what happens or a living function that's what happens inside my brain of the of cyborgs because yes, you have metal bones and metal screws and ball joints and stuff like that inside a human body. I wouldn't count those as cyborgs. Uh, having a hand you can control by old nerves uh, squeezing and your brain thinks it and makes a process like it happen. That to me is cyborgs. Uh, I just want to add that definition. So having a robotic device that's inside your body or outside your body be able to be replaced. I think is a high priority for the future of cyborgs. Yeah, which is essentially like like for example what we're talking about with the heart, we're talking about like a pacemaker on steroids, not just a pacemaker that keeps you alive, but a pacemaker that can help regulate in difficult conditions and make you super athlete. Yeah. And speaking of athlete, I mean, we've already had people with prosthetic limbs compete in the Olympics. How long until and and out compete in the Olympics? Yeah, and how long until robotic enhancements enter the sport world? A I don't know a football player with metal bone like metal bones that you can't break a bone just keeps running through people, or a uh, a soccer leg a soccer player with a robotic leg that's able to kick I don't know five times farther. Where do we draw the line on? cyborg technology and their rights and where do we what do we do with regular sports i mean i was talking about regular regular sports sports? yeah no i mean like i feel like immediately like we might have to cut this bit but we'll we'll see so there there's a reason the nba makes more money than the wnba it's because people want to see the sport played to the extreme and the male body is better at providing is, is better at competing at that sport but does the NBA become the WNBA to the Cyborg NBA, the CNBA? <laughs> because we want to see the best, the most extreme. We want to see top-tier athletes. 
And yeah, it's going to be crazy, you know, to watch some normal human jump that high, you know, jump and, and dunk. But what happens when the nets are raised to like 20 feet and you were just watching people dunk at like 20 feet high? I don't know, almost like you're playing like freaking griff ball in Halo with zero gravity, like just people jumping and everything is bigger, court's bigger, people are moving, but people are moving faster. So it's like, does does that just, do we just get rid of the NBA after that? Or does it just become like something that just a few people watch? Or because we're hipsters, do we say, oh, I prefer the real sports, like back in the sports from my day. It's an interesting thought because I could see both possibilities happening. I mean, not only would it advance what humans can do, but it could allow humans to do things that humans can't do. Imagine having your entire lower body replaced. You're able to spin your hips now 180, like it's on a pivot point. You might be able to do things or have attachments that you never had before. I mean, uh, exoskeletons are cyber technology. Why does a cyber technology have to mimic what a human looks like? Why not a snake? Why not have giant snakes playing basketball? I'd love to see an exoskeleton in a rugby match. Uh, that's called manslaughter, and <laughs> that's what that is. But the rights just don't stop there. Uh, taking a little detour uh, and taking a little inspiration from The Expanse, a TV show me and Nick both enjoy, what happens if you go to prison? Will they remove your enhancements will they douse your enhancements will they send you to a simp a different jail because of your enhancements what happens to people who break the law with super uh prosthetics now there are people who break the law with prosthetics and go to prison but not prosthetics that can punch through walls which are coming what happens to those people do we take away their arms and give them a lesser arm do we add a, a electronical bypass point where we can turn it off whenever we want what happens to those prisoners i have no idea uh, what happens if also that robotic technology is keeping them alive but also enhancing them like if they're able to i don't know see a wavelength that's able to help them see through walls and able to punch the code in to help escape or break into something are we legally allowed to take someone's eyes away from them i feel like we would i feel like if we get to the point where we have that we can just pop an eye in or out or just put like a like in star wars the restraining bolt on there that brings it down to to normal human levels and then when you get out you pop it off and it loads everything back up but also at the same time i imagine it's going to be similar to a phone where say your eye or something it needs regular updates and regular maintenance and yeah, it might be strong at the time, but as time goes on, I feel like you're going to fall behind. And I'm sure that there's going to be counters to your your stuff, like walls you can't see through with whatever, you know? And then maybe that's common, so people invent eyes that you can see through, and then they'll invent some other kind of wall. I mean, I feel like there's going to be both kinds of workarounds, because... I prefer not having lead lined walls. Well, you're going to get lead lined walls. But at the same time, so if it's that common, I, I think it's something you can just pop in and out with like a, a simple, simple surgery. I don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll even be that crazy. I mean, I'm, it's probably like you pop it out and it's like a freaking, uh, you know, two pronged electrical, uh, like a little battery, like a little NICAD battery or something back there where you just uh, unpop it and it just comes right out. Well, a lot of this is brain surgery stuff, like your eyes, your ears, your smell, and your senses. What if you just if you just destroy that that transmitter, or only allow it to transmit certain frequencies, like your normal range of color frequencies? I don't know. What does the government even have the right to perform surgery on you, against your will? I feel like it's probably like a one and done thing, where like if you uh, if you use your powers to try and get out or to do something you're not supposed to, they'll you violated your agreement or whatever, so they'll they'll take it out. But I, I have no idea if the government has the right to take something out of you, or even if they should. Well, also speaking of rights, what about the companies that make them? Are they able in allowing to track you? I mean, it's your leg. 
they made it, you paid for it, but are they allowed to track you, keep your data, sell your data of where you're walking to, what stores you're going to? Are the is the government able to just shut off your limbs? Like say you ha- say you're uh, you're dual amputee at the legs, and they have a warrant for your arrest. Does the government have the right to turn off your legs so they don't work anymore to make it easier to arrest you? That's like shooting someone in, the, in both legs. Uh, is that right? Is that legal? Well, according to a bunch of recent gun experts on the internet every cop should be able to shoot someone in both legs. So I imagine that people would be really be behind that of just turning someone's legs off if they're trying to run or run at somebody. Okay, what about turning off someone's heart? Like, hey, we're just going to give them a slight heart attack so they pass out. They might hit their head in the corner, but, you know, it's better safe than sorry, so it makes it easier to subdue them. Well, government tracking your limbs, government ha- maybe even hacking your limbs, or even illegal activity of people hacking your limbs to cause you to do things you wouldn't normally do. Imagine the ha- imagine the government wanted you dead. They or a uh, crime syndicate wanted you dead. They just hacked into your legs and you just walked into traffic. I feel like this would be a better conversation if we were talking with somebody who trusted the government. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Do I so I guess the basis of your question is do I think the government would use this technology for good? Let me think about that for a minute. <laughs> All right, what about this? Um, can a company that gave you synthetic eyes, robotic eyes to see in different frequencies, wavelengths, stuff like that, are what images you're seeing yours, or is it yours and the company's? Could the company log... Well, this is log- this is already in a... This debate's ongoing right now, right? Like, it's this the different sense, but if you take a naked picture of somebody... Is that yours or is it yours and Google or yours and Apple or whoever the fuck made your phone? Because right now it's Google's and it's yours. <laughs> it's Google's and yours. Yeah. Well, the reason now I... most people would say that that's not right, but that's n- oh, Nick, you forgot that's to... not what's happening. You forgot to say Google yours and the NSA's. Yeah, Google. Well, yeah. Uh, but the reason I say this is because there's a man who lost his eye, and he's a filmmaker, and he replaced his eye with a camera so he can record I out of his eye. I did see that. Yeah. I mean, who owns the footage if it's a – oh, my God. Could you imagine a monthly cyborg this is, technology? This is this is a Black Mirror episode. This is – oh, my God. It really is. Where they, they played back the person's stuff to figure out they were having an affair. When they were going back to rewind to look at like some memories, but then it like, went too far and they found out that two people were having an affair. I might not be remembering it correctly, but this is 100% a Black Mirror episode. It really is. I, I like going back to um, Edward, um, uh, the man who could feel with buttons and sensors on the bottom of his foot. He's working with MIT to do this. If he just decided to walk away from MIT, would he get to be able to keep the foot? No. I. It's his foot. Did you see? Um, I can't remember what it was. I was reading this guy who did, they, they brought this amputee in and they tried out this limb that he could control like with sensors somewhere. And he said it was amazing. It was able to, like he was able to walk and all this stuff. And he cried and then he tried to leave and they're like, oh no, you can't have that unless you have like $500,000. So well, there's no. a di- there's a once you leave the lab. No, okay, that's a little different. It's not yours. That's he isn't just a, for lack of better words, a test subject. He's also the one working on it, making it. It's that's a that's I think a little different. Mm, I don't think so, because I mean, I I grow trees for a living. None of those trees are mine. I don't know. It just seems like if if I got a allergy test on my back where they were testing substance like chemicals on my back. That's still my back. You can't take away my skin. And if you're taking away a person's leg, whether it be robotic or flesh, it's still their leg. Where where does it stop with rights of my body? If you have a, a, a robotic hand, is that really your hand? And like, say, this isn't, these are a couple of extreme examples. One, you kill someone with that hand. Say, it malfunctioned. Is that accidental manslaughter or is that murder? Two. If I lose a hand and get a replacement, that's part of me now. Would you 
t- remove a person's hand. Well, we did back in the ancient days. But in the 21st century, would you remove someone's hand for the crime they did? It, it Both are, are practical for me in this situation. And I want to know your opinion on this, Nick. Um, so one, this is a movie. And I, I'm looking it up. I have no idea. I'm just going to throw out a stab in the dark and say, say Philip Dick had a hand in this. But uh, <laughs> don't know for certain. But um, have you seen Repo Men? Yes. Where, yeah, where they go and they, if someone can't pay for their leg or their heart, then they just take that organ back from them. Yeah, but with this, with our modern medical center, even if a person can't, doesn't have insurance, we still treat them. We don't. If we if a person's dying and we give them blood, we don't take the blood back if they can't afford it. Yeah. But I guess but they didn't have I don't know. It doesn't seem like uh it's a common theme for these amputees to get free limbs or, or to get these limbs even if they provide work and time and or or testing or, or whatever that, that I've seen. And it is and then it's it is terrible. <laughs> I mean that that's it is fucked up. I mean, it shouldn't cost they, you an arm and a leg for an arm and a leg. How long were you waiting for that? I one? just came up with, well, with that one. I'm proud of myself for that. Um, no, I, I agree. But it's that's the thing. It's it's like any new technology. The, the initial ones are going to be very expensive. And the problem is every prosthetic is different depending on where it got cut off, who it's going on. It's like it's not like you're churning out a bunch of like, oh, I need like a right limb. Each one needs to be made for the person. And then it's like, what can they afford and, and what can they do? These are all custom made things. And why? Why not have an, Cause there's, why not? Cause there's not a demand. No, there's not enough demand to make, make it cost effective. Well, if I, uh, is what I think. Why not have like an arm that has like a, like a, like a stock extension for a gun that's able to adjust length for whatever length that fits you. Well, I think it's because of how how complicated the technology is. For I, I, I mean, you can get simple simple ones for relatively cheap, but like if you want to control it with your mind or you want it to sense things, like this one uh, artificial limb I was reading about, it has sensors that can that sense uh, force, torque, vibration, contact, position, heat, flux, and temperature, which is a lot. It's v- pretty expensive but that's almost like everything your hand does so if you want to essentially people it's like if you want to be regain i don't know it's expensive if you want to regain full use of your hand and i'm not saying whether that's right or wrong i'm just saying that that's the way it is i disagree with that so there i there are a lot of engineers who i follow who have made their own prosthetic limbs it's yes a bit expensive but all those things you just listed off nick those are all pretty cheap electronic parts i can buy from china i mean the only major problem would be filtering the data which is just code which would be trial and error if you find an open source software for it after someone's already done it i mean thermal that's easy torque that's easy uh pressure that's easy i what else were the other uh senses on the slim uh contact position and heat flux and temperature yeah i you could buy pretty much all those sensors you just listed off for about 30 bucks i feel like that's not true i i feel like that's true but not a this isn't something that like i want to put 30 dollars of parts in like i wouldn't put 30 dollars of parts for sensors into my car like knock off china parts this is my fucking body it, but it's not going like i'm gonna put some in your good body. parts it's not going in, but do you want to be changing out shitty wiring harnesses the rest of your life? Do or what's my other choice of not be able to form to afford a prosthetic limb? Yeah, I'd rather change out shitty parts than not have a limb. I don't know. I just I feel like I don't know. I I, I don't know anything about on how those advanced sensors. it might be. It might be a little bit more expensive, but the functions you say are quite easily possible, quite cheaply. But like you mentioned earlier, there probably isn't a high demand market for it, which is probably the major issue. Well, right. That's the main problem is you don't have enough people paying. So you don't have enough interest in driving the cost down because there's really no profit in it. How how long would you want your 
prosthetic limb or your robotic or your cyborg enhancement to last before it needs to be replaced because you know businesses will make it last a certain date before it needs to go out oh i agree and and so this is the so war has always driven everything prosthetics everything yeah i'm sure especially prosthetics because it's one of those things that really only happens during wartime luckily that's pretty often um, but not that often especially now uh, prosthetics have come a long way in part i don't know if thanks to is the right word but due to the the global war on terror that that's where a lot of the prosthetics research is coming from is getting these these guys back up and going and so they're you know a lot of that is is government funded so there's you know there's a good bit of money heading into that i mean i'm sure there there could be more i don't really know i didn't really look too much into it but i think and this is just like not that i'm hoping for this but if you saw another large scale like world war ii world war well i guess it would be world war three situation i feel like the prosthetics industry would would explode and you would be able to get cheap quality prosthetics well with the market beagle i see happening less I see the future being less people who are missing limbs or missing sensor organs and more people getting it cosmetically or artsy. I see that market unfortunately growing, which is a bit weird to say. Um, but think, so look at what, what we've kind of talked about. We kind of talked about eyes and nose, but no one's, we haven't really talked about senses. Like your hand is a pretty complicated piece of machinery. It can turn in all sorts of ways feel all sorts of things whereas like there's pretty obvious upgrades to your to your nose and your in your hearing and your in your eyes but I, I don't really know i guess besides strength what really the upgrade on your hands would be not able to feel pain anymore so you can grab hot things so you don't get burned to squeeze and rip open bars if you need to to uh, carry things that have grip strength so you can grip onto something if you're falling and you don't ha- you don't but that's all pain that's so that's the only so the pain and then strength but strength is like what i'm saying is like i feel like that's the thing is that your hand is already it does so much it's hard to imagine it doing more i'm sure it can do more what about claws even just improve its basic functions what about what about changing the bottom of our feet to be more like cats so we don't make sounds when we walk <laughs> oh my gosh totally unrelated but <laughs> Did I tell you about how Cats, the musical, like the digital one, originally had a bunch of cat buttholes in it? Oh, God. <laughs> and then they had to edit it out. So some guy had to go back through the entire musical and edit out a bunch of cat buttholes. <laughs> he did not get it paid enough for his job. Oh, n- n- no. Do you know what would be cool? Like, um, like uh, uh, I guess basically The Matrix, but in Star Wars... How R two's got that little hand thing that goes plugs into computers and they can talk to the system and shut down you know trash compactors, but in like the new Star Wars series, like the dude one of the guys has that hand and you just like take your hand and just plop it right into a computer and then go through it in your head. So I could see something like that where it's pretty f- focused. I mean, doesn't I mean it doesn't I, have to be a hand anymore? It could be quite literally anything it right well, what i'm saying it's literally just like a fucking basically a, a usb port i guess if i had to improve anything about my hands is i didn't, didn't heat them up working out outside in like below freezing temperatures it'd be nice if i had little hand warmers on all the time if i would just like click that on be good to go i mean you could add flamethrowers to your hands if you want That'd be bad if you accidentally activate it during fire season. That's just like too much, too much liability there. Or if you're a nurse, medical foam to you know stop bleeding. You're there's. N- I don't know if I don't know if I want to trust a nurse who has to apply so much medical foam that she just has a hand dedicated to well, it. Well, it doesn't have to be entire hand. It could be like a finger. I mean, there is no limitation. Your hand could be a Swiss Army knife. There's your any part of your organs. Any part of your body could be changed out for any cr- kind of creature, any kind of engineering piece. Hands, feet, external, whatever you want. Internal, whatever you want. That is all a possibility, I would say, within the next 50 years. So I guess then the next question is, at what point do, do, does one stop becoming 
a human because I to well, me before you get to that Nick I want to mention one okay. more thing because I also had the same conclusion of when is a human stop being a human um, the thing I wanted to mention was uh, have you are you Nick please tell me you've seen Firefly uh, I have no idea what you're talking about Serenity try again <laughs> fuck you <laughs> all right so you know what Neuralink is right yes okay well different in the past Different universities have able to control a population of mice using robotics. At Northwestern, they made a group of mice, which they added, which they turned to cyborgs by adding electronical devices to their brain, turned all the mice into docile friends. They were able to control the mice's emotions through cyborgs and robotics. And I am very worried about that. Because if you saw Firefly or Serenity, it leads to people be able to control how you feel and how you think. And I do not like that. So I'm torn between like propaganda and the Matrix. Like I feel like we already we're almost there. We almost have what you're talking about. I do not like that. Imagine if me and you, Nick, were enemies, we were fighting, someone could quite literally hit a button. And we would stop disagreeing. We would simply be docile sheep walking to the slaughter. We'd be drones. So wait, so like, here, hypothetical example, that when uh, a bunch of actors in Hollywood sing Imagine, that just everyone starts getting along just like that? Yeah, that's actually not impossible. That's If, if everyone had that sensor and they hooked up the sensory code to a audible tune or frequency and they played that and you heard that that song you could automatically i don't know have chemicals released into your brain to release a serotonin which you just chill out or simply change your electrical impulses and signals where you no longer express or able to feel anything but mellow and happiness which honestly gotcha. sounds god awful to me i mean we wouldn't get i mean i feel like we're almost there don't say that, Nick, because they'll come for us if we if we, <laughs> if that happens. But we are able to do with mice, and to me, if we're able to do with mice, eventually we'll make it away to humans, which is a scary thought. But like you, Nick, you were bringing up, how long until humans aren't humans anymore? I mean, if you have a car, and over the years it gets worn down, you might have it for 20-odd years, and you keep replacing parts, by the end of that 20 years, it might be pretty much a whole new car because you have all these different parts on it. When does it stop becoming the same car? And same with humans. When does a human cyborg stop being human and simply become a robot? And I think you're about to lead with that, Nick, and why don't you take it away? Well, I was just thinking about, like, when you're talking, we were talking about hands, and I was thinking about... You are very focused when on I'm, prosthetics out of okay. all the things of cyborgs. I know. Well, I'm just thinking, so, like, when I'm at work gripping a shovel... <laughs> gripping a dick. <laughs> gripping a dick. Gripping a shovel, it's the same, I don't know, technique. It's the same form that humans have been using to grip spears, tools throughout time. And that just suddenly that being gone seems like, you know, maybe it's replaced by a claw or whatever the fuck. But just like the toe, the first prosthetic was more about identity than, than function. I feel like the there's almost nothing that represents humans more than the hand. And so at what point when we get rid of those and we get rid of you know how, how much of us i mean obviously your 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 mind your soul is what keep, makes you human but at some point you become darth vader and you become more machine than man and how do we decide i mean what it's not like we're going to be like oh i have two classes like if you have oh, 40% well, he's got too much yeah once you pass that you know when you go from 49.99 to 50 then that's it like that's the cutoff i mean most likely uh, society would lean the other way towards mostly pros mostly cyborg less human but there's got to be a distinction somewhere is it just like the what's the other episode we did on like uh biohacking something can't think of the right word for it genetic modification where there's people think there should be two classes of humans those that use genetic material to or hack their genetic material to unlock their full potential and those that don't Whereas the ones who unlock their quote-unquote full potential will 
they'll be better at every like everything they'll be more likely to get jobs and stuff and create like a second class of humans is it the same thing with cyborgs and then i then the point i guess um, you're gonna have to stop me a minute because i'm almost done but once we get that point where we're mostly machine like what can we go back like are we going to get so far away where we just can't exist anymore i mean singularity seems to be the trend human humanity is going upon but i think to me being a cyborg is simply being human with advancement so keeping on that human side so you are more flesh than material you have you're not changing your limbs your internal organs to be far different from what they are naturally so instead of having i don't know a sonic boom hand that's able to knock the dirt break up rocks you still have a prosthetic hand that looks like a human hand if it looks more human current human then i would say that's human but what our definition of humans going to change it's going to adapt and i don't know the the day of a me- of humanity be able to run fast compete simply be due to evolution i think is over what so here's yeah all right sorry i interrupted you keep going well i was just gonna say i think the era of evolution has come to an end and the era of modifications has just begun well i guess what i guess what you're saying is the era of natural evolution has ended and now artificial evolution is going to continue yes but a little bit more but, poetically yeah obviously <laughs> that's not what i'm here for <laughs> but i uh, so i'm just curious and I, I didn't come across as curious if you did you know when you like touch someone like like if I brush up against my wife or something and I get like good feelings if like through my like you know like you just hit someone like you like you don't hit someone like oh you just brush someone and you're like oh man like you give someone a hug when you like have contact with another human who you enjoy like you hug your friend or whatever does that work with with like all these sensors and stuff can you does like skin to skin contact or human to human contact send the same like does that because do we have a sensor for that or is that all in our heads i imagine that's mostly all in our heads i mean uh from the prosthetics i've seen i mean for the cyborgs we've seen i've seen pe- blind people be able to see with their tongue we've quite literally implanted sensors into people's tongues so they're able to see with their tongue we've acted uh have suits so people are able to hear through feel uh so you can say and they'll like uh, uh, put braille on you or feeling on you and Deaf and blind people adapt to all these uh, huge mountains. The body finds a way. And the idea of hug and embrace, I mean, why can't we have synthetic nerves? It's just electrical impulses. Why not have, I don't know, Nick, we're far apart, where if we have uh, cyborg bodies, I could upload a, uh, I don't know, a file to you that makes you feel like you're being hugged by me. Because, uh... So I'm going to cut it off after that. I don't want to any other files from you. <laughs> Install Chinese virus. Got it. <laughs> um, but that doesn't seem human, though, to me, right? That seems nice, and that seems great, and that seems... I guess... You know, nice to send your family and friends across the country, but that doesn't seem human. I guess, does human... Is to be human a physical feature or is to be human something beyond physicality is or is it a combination of both do you need both brain and body to be human or do you just need one or the other if i i mean i think i think it's definitely both i mean most of the the people who receive these kind of prosthetics and, and arms and legs and stuff like that a lot of them say it restored their humanity and they feel human again. So I I do think that these Or is that just that part being body part parts of the tribe? Are... Is that like the same thing with the Egyptians and the toe? Just having a new body part makes you feel more adapted to society. But isn't isn't being part of a tribe being human? I wouldn't say so. I say it's a human feature. I wouldn't say it's called being human. I think an individual can be human. It's not necessarily a necessity for a tribe. And 
to keep on this this uh, thought experiment. What about a person who's brain dead? They are only in body. Are they still human? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so, because people seem pretty okay with if someone's brain brain dead for a while, of pulling the cord. You know, if you if you go into surgery or whatever, and I don't know, they they put you down and you're unconscious. No one's going to pull the cord. But if your brain hasn't worked for three months, then people don't. Obviously, they feel remorse, but no one walks away. No one puts them in jail for killing a person. Okay, then what about the other side of the spectrum? What happens if they're paralyzed from the down and all they have is their brain? They can only think. Are they still human? Yeah. I mean, those definitely those people still interact in society. You know, they might, they'll pro- they're most likely in a wheelchair, but people think they're human. So yeah, I guess humanity mostly comes from your mind but i but i think the identity of a body is is just it's very powerful oh i i completely agree with that statement i think a body is a strong symbol but we're able to replace that to whatever symbol we want almost now i say in the next i say by our time for our grandchildren they will have the ability to choose to be god either in the matrix if they're not already uh robotics uh, cyborgs or bio hacked it, it like this is this might be the last era before humans divulge into different spectrums on the tree this might be that point on the branch of the evolutionary trait where we split off and this is the last of our common ancestor yeah well I, and and this is a question that i'm i don't think any of us are gonna be able to answer but it's just crazy to think obviously that Certain genes are going to carry on, and certain genes will not. Well, that's not necessarily true. Anymore. But, but, well, no. I mean, that's that's true. Now, the the factors deciding what genes carry and what genes don't. Um, until we until we discover immortality, certain genes will carry on, and certain genes will not. But now it's under a different set of rules, and we don't really know what those rules are right now. And so we might have certain groups that excel for like 100 300 500 years which is a blink of the eye in the evolutionary time frame then another group that shows something else after that they take over but it could be a third group who did something completely different that lagged behind for a couple you know centuries two three four thousand years and then they end up being the majority and now we're at a point where we're it's not uh nature's not and they are nature's always deciding who lives and dies but it's almost more in our control of who what genes are getting passed on and and i guess what what genetics or what uh not what genetics what cybernetics you get could play a part in that i don't know it's kind of crazy and then other thing too is these are expensive and they're probably going to be expensive for a while eventually everyone will be able to get them but what happens when only certain class of people have access to this well, then you get a bunch of super soldiers who dictate what goes, what's right, and what's wrong. <laughs> you get you get fucked, is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, as of right now, I'd say uh, most cybernetics are probably not in the hands of the rich. Is what I'd say of of the the powerful. I'd say it's mostly the people who who need them, which tend to be lower on the economic scale. That's what it seems like. But when it starts becoming mainstream, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. And, and, and who does it, too? I mean, you're going to have probably, if I had to guess, religious... Uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, I was going to say just like a fear of... Oh, uh, Luddites? Of, uh, <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> exactly the word, even though that word is using correctly, Mike. <laughs> I know this, and yet I still do it. Um. Luddites just want to be paid and for considered skilled labor. They don't hate technology, but um, I don't know. It's just uh, it's, there's so many changes, and it's not just this. Like you're going to have cybernetics. You're also going to have the better understanding of human genetics and manipulation of those genes, all going on around the same time. It's. I mean, I could see this. This. It's going to take. A, I mean, we're not going to know where the human genome splits for tens of thousands of years like or a long time so 
It's it's not something we'll know today, but it is crazy to think about of where the fuck are we going? It is, and I do not have the answer for that. But a question I have for you, Nick, which you might have the answer for, is if you were going to get a enhancement on your body, a cyber a cyborg enhancement, what would it be? Are you still stuck on the hands just to make yourself warm in the winter, or is there something else that you might want? No, oh, I'd get new knees. <laughs> I mean, the, the number, the one of the number one problems in in my career field is people blowing their knees out. Hiking up and down mountains all day, sometimes carrying weight, people blow their knees out all the time. If I didn't have to worry about that, oh fuck, I could, I'd be doing. I mean, I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing now, but I'd be able to do it for longer. So, um, but yeah, I'd definitely get new knees. What about you? I would want to have a sense that no humans uh, that humans don't have but another animal does. I would love to I don't know see like a chameleon see most of light see some form of well hopefully it'd be like a contact lens or some augmented reality where I'm able to take it off like glasses but to see or sense in some form that's not human like a I don't know thermal like a snake or smell or like uh, feel electrical pulses like a shark in water, just some other sense. Oh, oh, ooh, I don't know if a human mind is capable of computing a sense as powerful as a shark in the water feels electrical pulses. Our brain might not be made to do that, huh? That's a interesting question. If you have a new sense added that's not human based, can the brain adapt? Hmm. Well, like, I mean, it'd be sweet to breathe underwater, but would your body just, like, once you've been underwater for so long? I guess if you're getting oxygen, it shouldn't be a problem. But no, it is a problem. Would your body start freaking out if you've been underwater for, like, an hour? Uh, I mean, I guess not. If you go scuba diving, you, your brain's fine. No, um, they actually, this is a little off topic, but they did this. So there's a liquid wa- water that we can breathe in, so rich in oxygen, so you can be fully submerged. You can have your lungs full of water. Um, you can only do it for so long and most people get freaked out by it because it's our basic impulse to, oh, water in our lungs, bad, freak out, freak out, freak out. Um, you can be trained and overcome it, um, but it's only for a certain amount of time you're able to do that. Our bodies, our lungs just can't physically do it. Um, and another sensor is a, a person, she lost all sense of fear, but when deprived of oxygen, like in a CO2 chamber, her fear organ which is completely disconnected like not not disconnected completely ruined automatically uh kicks back up and engages um swimming i don't think would be possible but having a new type of tongue where i can taste different things or use my tongue as another sensory organ to i don't know sense things in the room that'd be pretty cool or just uh i don't know um ha- i mean uh heat regulation would be awesome like- oh my god yes if I if I was working in the snow, it could be warm. If I was, you know, if I was fishing and fell into the Pacific, I could be warm. Like if the cold didn't affect me, that'd be pretty sweet. That yeah, ooh, I like I like that one, Nick. That's a very good one. Out of curiosity, if people wanted to tell us what they would want to be a cyborg, or if they want to be a cyborg at all, and what enhancements they would have. Where would they find us? You can find us on Instagram and on YouTube. Can they find us on Twitter? Drop us a message. You cannot find us on Twitter because they're the ones who we had a brains. <laughs> we had a, we had a pretty well uh, well rounded discussion on cyborgs, and Twitter is the one place. One thing I didn't research when I wanted to type in cyborg penis. <laughs> That's what Twitter is. I was too afraid. I wanted to know the answers, but I didn't know, didn't want to know what was going to come up. So, you that all right? Our minds work very differently, my friend. That is like easily the number one thing that people are going to to invest in. Well, now, now, well, now I got to ask: Could you have a cyborg vagina, like one that's able to, or, or like, or, or, a, or a dick that can vibrate? Yeah, that's the um, they did that in Archer. Where she left it in the sink, and she's like, "You got, you got to stop leaving it in the sink." Oh God! I brush my teeth here. <laughs> oh God, that's now burned into my mind. Uh, and out of curiosity, are you reading any books? I am reading 
Charlie Wilson's war about the United States in Afghanistan in the 80s. Never a better time to read it. Super good. I cannot put it down. I've only been reading it for four or five days, and I'm halfway through, and it's a pretty big book. Uh, what about you, Mike? What are you reading? I'm reading one of your suggestions. I am reading Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, and boy, he has an interesting family, to say the least. <sighs> Gotta love it. I love that book. Well, with that being said, I think we hit a bunch of points on prosthetics and cyborgs. And Nick, as always, absolute pleasure. And as always, thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram 